Hi, my name is John Earnshaw. I'm the Chief Product Evangelist at PyData Metrics, and today I'm going to be talking to you about how to own one of the SERP's most interesting features, that is Google's Answer Card. So welcome to another edition of SEO in the Shed. So let's, let's begin with a SERP. Now, bearing in mind that Google spends tens of millions of pounds trying to ensure that the SERP is a true reflection of searcher intent. And we also know, on the other hand, that um, search SEO begins in the mind of the searcher. So what better way to get inside the mind of your searchers and your customers than by examining the SERPs themselves? Okay. Now let's begin with a little bit of clarification. People often get confused with some of the features, so let's begin with answer cards and people also ask. So what is an answer card? An answer card is essentially a SERP feature that appears above the organic results and seeks to directly answer a question um, that has been posed to the search engine. Further down on page one, um, sometimes just below that, or even on page two, you'll find people also ask. And this feature um, is created by Google to try and encourage um, more interaction. It's, again, Google here is actually trying to understand intent, is looking inside the mind of those searchers, and is serving up questions that they might also be interested in discovering the answers to. So what's the benefit? Of appearing in the answer card. Well, the benefits are several. Number one, you've got a visual advantage of being there right above the fold. Okay. Secondly, um, you're in position zero. Thirdly, trust and authority, two of Google's four key tenants, the others being relevance and quality. You're going to rank twice on page one as well. And finally, there is a voice search advantage because Google is more often than not likely to pull the answer from screenless devices um, that appears in the answer card. Thereby, your answer will appear in people's homes, in their living rooms, in their kitchens, in their lounges, etc. Now, that's really cool. People say your traffic might drop, and in some cases, that's true. But you have to ask the question, what sort of traffic is it? And in fact, there was a recent study done by Rand Fishkin that showed that 50% of searches in Google resulted in no click whatsoever. And in fact, the other day, my old friend Joseph Wallace, Joseph, if you're out there watching, how are you? It's about time we met up. He actually reminded me that Google's first KPI was how quickly they could hand off a user from the search engine to a website. Well, it seems like that is now reversed. It's not all doom and gloom. To understand traffic fluctuations, you need to first understand whether you do indeed appear in the answer card. Um, you may be losing traffic. On the other hand, you're gonna be gaining immeasurable brand awareness and trust, as this SERP radar shows. The other thing you can do is actually encourage click-through by alluding to the fact, either obviously or subtly, that there is more detail, as this example shows. So here, people are going to read those four steps, and then there's a little link saying more items. So if you put some really good stuff up front, okay, but make it clear that there is more information to follow, you're going to get that brand awareness, you're going to get two results on page one, and you're also going to get the click-through. The other day, Matthew Hunt, on LinkedIn made this great statement. What he said was less traffic doesn't mean fewer opportunities, just different opportunities. And you know what? That's so right. So if we're losing traffic, is it really going to affect our ROI or will it just impact on our vanity traffic? Okay, so let's get down to the nitty gritty. How do you actually appear in the answer card? Well, first and foremost, you have to get onto page one. And here's a great example of somebody who got onto page one. Good friend of mine, Louise, optimized her brother's website, Sussex Builders, and pushed them um, up through the rankings into position one. Next thing she needs to do is start thinking about that answer card. Okay, so once you're on page one, first thing you need to do is look in the SERP for answer cards that are coming from US sites in the UK. Or if you're in the US, you want to be looking for UK answer cards because Google doesn't want them in there, we don't want them in there, and you're going to get a much better experience by actually having a local country answer card in the majority. Sometimes Google doesn't really care, but in the main, it's quite easy to actually shift these answer cards out with a local country one. Next thing, okay, so there's no US answer card. What you want to do is look for answer cards from your country and then simply create something better. Create something that sounds better, that looks better, is, uh, is better architected. Okay, next, 
Where there is no answer card, look in the SERP, as you can see in this example here, where we actually have the people also ask feature, okay? Look across a period of one or two weeks, take the most commonly asked questions, and then create content and optimize it in the way I'm gonna show you in just a second. Okay, focus on the most frequent questions, the how, the is, the why, just as you can see in these answers here, okay? Now down to the top 12 takeaways for owning those answer cards. Number one, decide on what's gonna look best. Is it gonna be a numbered list, bullet points, or paragraphs, okay? Format it in the correct way. Take a look and see what's already there. Can you improve on that format? If it's gonna be a paragraph, keep it close to 45 to 50 words. If it's a list or table, then format it as such and keep your HTML clean. That's absolutely vital. We wanna make life easy for Google. Use a clear call to action. And you know what, just as we showed you in the previous example, make it clear that there is more detail below. More interesting, let's encourage those click-throughs. Next, include the question in the title and potentially the header one as well. And also, look at the language that's used in the People Also Ask feature and try to match that. And above all, be accurate and approach the topic from a position of authority. If you can, cite relevant sources, authoritative sources, and you can do that further down the page. And don't forget that when Google is creating the answer card, it will take text from anywhere on your page. Okay, so do bear that in mind. So make sure all the content on your page matches the question intent. Okay, this final one, and we've tried this and it does seem to work. Link from other pages on your website to the page that's answering the question using the people also ask text as the anchor. I hope you enjoyed that. Don't forget to subscribe to Shed News where you can get information on all my latest videos, talks, webinars, charts, and some really interesting insights that you're probably gonna to want to print out and stick on your fridge just as I do at home, okay? And finally, okay, you can download our People Also Ask and Answer Card Cheat Sheet. There are links in the description below where you can also follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter. Thanks for watching. Until the next time, see you soon.